for Krima Media's policy, I'm Sane Zamini. Joining me today to discuss the Social Employment Fund given to community-based activists and paralegals who support victims of gender-based violence is Tanganisa Institute for Development Southern Africa Program Manager, Chiyeza Chakuta. Can you briefly tell us about your organization? Sanganisa Institute for Development in Southern Africa is an intermediary grant maker. We work in all nine provinces of South Africa, and we use a three-pillar model uh, that looks at building capacity of community-based organizations. We also give out small grants to community-based organizations as well. Uh, we also do convening work around different issues that um, aligned to our program focus areas. And we have four program focus areas. One of those is gender justice and women in leadership. Uh, second focus area is access to justice. We also work around climate justice and resilience. Um, and then lastly, uh, democracy and social accountability. And all our work is implemented through uh, grassroots structures. So we support grassroots structures such as community-based organizations. Uh, we also work with grassroots uh, movements, um, you know, just as part of our model uh, of support. And you position your organization, um, as you've just said, as an innovative grant maker with the experience, insights, and community networks to enable your your organization to improve the lives of society's most vulnerable. Now, who are your partners and how do you identify the vulnerable communities that you are currently working with? As, as I mentioned, in terms of um, the model that we use to work, we work through uh, grassroots structures. Uh, we work with community-based organizations and the the reason for us working with community based organizations is we re recognize the value um that they have in terms of their proximity to their communities to the people to the issues that are affected um by various social injustices um and so we recognize that they are a channel through which um we can work to reach communities um they're able to hold service providers or public officials to account more sustainably because they are based in those particular areas. Many of them are in underserved communities. And so that's how we identify the vulnerable because we work through community-based organizations um, that then channel the resources that they get through Tlanganisa. Many of those resources are technical and they're aimed at just enhancing their impact in terms of their various interventions. Now tell us about the Social Employment Fund, uh, which was launched through the Presidential Employment Stimulus and how your organization has been utilizing this initiative, particularly in terms of uh, gender-based violence cases. So I think the, the Social Employment Fund has really been a game changer in terms of the impact we've been able to have um, I mentioned earlier that in terms of our focus areas, two of those four are around access to justice, and uh, the other one is around gender justice and women in leadership. And a big component of our gender justice works looks at addressing gender-based violence, uh, particularly the drivers of gender-based violence. And so the model that we are currently implementing through the Social Employment Fund is building the capacity of community advice offices as master trainers uh, around mm -hmm. gender-based violence. Uh, and community advice offices really are community-based organizations whose focus is on access to justice. And so they have within them professionals that are known as community-based paralegals. And paralegals basically provide information um, that's related to the rights that uh, communities have uh, they provide referral support. They also just provide generic information around access to justice. So things like birth registrations, things like how to apply for a social grant and so forth. Um, and so because, again, of their proximity to the communities, we, we took the decision to train them 
the community advice offices and the paralegals within those offices to train uh, paralegals as master trainers in GBV paralegalism. So their paralegalism would now focus entirely on gender-based violence, uh, providing legal advice around gender-based violence. So things like how to apply for a protection order, um, if you want to open a, a case with the police, what are your rights if you walk in, if your client walks into a police station? So all of that training it was specifically around gender-based violence. And so after the master training um, took place, each master trainer would then go and train a number of what we call sisterhood advocates. So those are the employees within the Social Employment Fund. So they would in turn train ordinary women uh, from the community on becoming a GBV specialized paralegal. So they would provide information on how to apply for a protection order, but also taking into consideration some of the key uh, ethical guidelines on becoming a paralegal. Because remember, many of these women have not been employed. So things like confidentiality, uh, documentation, or how do you provide debriefing support to a client and how do you refer and things like that. And so with the Social Employment Fund, I think what really makes it unique is Klanisa has taken a decision to only employ women. So we are currently employing 2,551 women as part of, of this particular project. And I think it's really a game changer uh, in the sense that women have been mostly affected by unemployment. We know that unemployment levels are quite high in the country, but women in particular have been affected because of the nature of their role within the community, within their families and so forth. And I think that what that's what makes uh, this project in particular uh, a game changer for the communities that we are working in. And the, for the benefits of our viewers, how important are programs such as uh, the Social Employment Fund? Well, I mean, <laughs> I cannot emphasize enough how, you know, um, the this particular project is, is important. First of all, I think what the Social Employment Fund has done is recognize uh, the social good that uh, community-based organizations contribute to in their different uh, communities. Because a lot of the community-based organizations, like I said, are working in underserved areas. And so they already have access to the margin to, to the marginalized of, of, of our societies. And I think secondly, women have been uh, making significant contributions within their communities as leaders, whether as part of a church, as part of a stock fall, you know, just as recognized community leaders. And most of that work has been unpaid. And so what this project does is it provides an opportunity uh, for women to be employees, to see themselves as employable, to gain confidence uh, as prospective employees beyond uh, this project. And I think lastly, community-based organizations, I think are quite um, underestimated as employers. What this project has also done is it amplifies their role, uh, community-based organizations as employers, because we have community-based organizations that we are partnering with currently, employing as many as 150 women. And I think that speaks volumes in terms of their capacity to be employers within those uh, within their, their various communities. Mm. And while your caseload has increased because of the Social Employment Fund, there are shortfalls in policing and even with the courts. How do we ensure that victims of gender-based violence receive justice? I think that's a very important question because uh, part of the challenge that we have in terms of addressing gender-based violence is those same challenges that you've mentioned around uh, uh, policing, and around, um, you know, just challenges in accessing the courts. And in our view, we see access justice as twofold. Uh, we see the service provision, so the justice system and the provision of, uh, you know, things like courts and policing, uh, psychosocial support and so forth as a service. Uh, but on the other hand, 
we also see the people, so the women uh, survivors of gender-based violence is the second part of access to justice. And I think that for us has been the most critical part because we know that the rates of reporting, for example, have been quite low. So what we see uh, as um, quite recently, the, the crime stats were, were, uh, were released, the latest crime stats. And we know that it's only a percentage of women who've experienced violence who actually go and report. And so for us, the emphasis has been around creating demand for those services to ensure that reporting of cases of GBV um, you know, goes up even where the quality of the service is not up to par in terms of, you know, second issues like secondary victimization that women experience when they go to the police station and so forth. That can only be addressed when there is an uptake of those services. And I think that's what this project has been able to do. Uh, we've seen the number of GBV cases report go report reporting go up in the communities in which we are working, but we've also mm -hmm. seen that um, you know there's a high there's been a high level of accountability um mm -hmm. for for the police at court you know just something as simple as applying for a protection order um which which should be you know accessible according to the what the domestic uh, violence act provides for um you know it's been quite inaccessible but what we see is that you know there's a higher number of protection orders uh in terms of uh, maintenance orders we've we've seen an increase in applications for maintenance orders uh we've seen that the number of cases that are withdrawn at the police station have also gone down and i think that's something that that we we need to recognize even though we are not quite there yet in terms of the gaps that are there in policing, in the courts and so forth, the visibility of the sisterhood advocates on the ground has allowed for greater social accountability. Now, South Africa recently observed uh, 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, a widespread mm. pro uh, problem in our country. How can now we as a country or as a society be more effective in combating the scourge? You know, it's always interesting how um, the 16, uh, 16 days um, of activism against gender-based violence is portrayed and how it seems the issue of gender-based violence is amplified um, during, that, during that period. But I think for us, we actually see, um, you know, the six, 16 days as an opportunity Rather, let me call it an accountability window where we get a chance to all take stock for you as media, for ourselves as, as a grant maker and the kind of support that we provide for mm -hmm. private sector. I think for government as well in terms of the, their leadership and what they've been able to do since the last 16 days, because it's almost like, you know, there's a, there's a lot of focus uh, during that time and then you know, something else takes over. But also there's the, the focus for me is quite limiting um, in the sense that, you know, we then focus on the cases that are shocking. But I think it's beyond that. We need to take it as an opportunity to all see the different contributions that we've made as different stakeholders and see where we can do better, where can greater leadership be provided, how can we ensure that more resources are committed to preventing gender-based violence, but also addressing gender-based violence, not only from a financial perspective, but also in terms of just a, a, a commitment uh, uh, that is demonstrated in terms of, you know, implementation of the domestic violence act within police stations as we're talking about you know is 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 the quality of services improving uh in that end and i think the nsp on gender-based violence and and femicide in 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 south africa is also a very good uh starting point uh for for all of us uh just looking at the different pillars and how it looks at the manifestation of vi violence against women and how it varies and how violence is experienced quite differently. Just ensuring that we've been able to look at the status of women and what makes them vulnerable to, to violence. Mm -hmm. You know, things like gender parity, 
economic empowerment and access to opportunities because those really are the drivers of gender-based violence and uh, looking at, at, at it more holistically, I think just provides us an opportunity uh, to address um, gender-based violence. That was Langanisa Institute for Development Southern Africa Program Manager Chiyeza Chaguta in conversation with policy to discuss the Social Employment Fund.